Oh, okay, so the question is about sunscreen. How does it work and how, how is it best used? The, the answer is there are many different ingredients that, that are used in sunscreen products. Some of the ones that caused allergic reactions have been removed. So people who used to have trouble from sunscreen, they'd break out in a rash when they used it or they would sting when they used it. Those ingredients are um, gone from almost all sunscreens manufactured. You probably couldn't find them anywhere in the United States. So you don't have to worry about that. So now what we have are basically two categories, mechanical sunscreens and chemical sunscreens. So the mechanical ones are have pulverized uh, minerals in them that absorb the photons of light. And the chemicals, chemical sunscreens have chemicals that absorb the photons. So what you're doing is putting a layer of of a barrier between you and this, your skin cells and the sun so that, in, so that they absorb the photons of light instead of your, your skin. And what we have in our skin to absorb photons is melanin. So that's why melanin, uh, I guess, that's what it does. I can't say that's why it exists, but that's what it does. It absorbs light, and the people who have the most melanin in, the, in their skin absorb the most light, so that skin is better protected than people who have just a little bit of melanin. And there are two kinds of melanin. One, one is pheomelanin and one is eumelanin, and pheomelanin is in what we see in people with red hair, and it doesn't work as well as eumelanin. And some people, most people have a combination of the two. So there, and then there, there's a lot known about the science of how all the how photons interact with the skin. But we know that those barriers, either chemical or physical, are going to bind to absorb a lot of them so they don't get deeper down. Without them there, UVA light, is, that's the light that goes through window glass and comes through this uh, cloudy day, penetrates deeply into the dermis. So it goes down many millimeters into the skin, and that's what we think causes most of the photo damage, the, the wrinkling, the la loss of elasticity, the breaking of the collagen fibers, because it's damaging the dermis. The UVB light that causes sunburn um, that's what you get on a sunny day, and you get red immediately from it. That penetrates just into the epidermis, and it kills the kills the ep some of those epidermal cells, and it can also mutate the stem cells that live right at the base of the epidermis, and that's probably what triggers a lot of the skin cancer development. But some of the UVA does as well. So both are carcinogenic and, and very well proven to be. Now, which which works better? Um, to take care of you, well, it really depends on what, what you like. The physical sunscreens, usually it's titanium dioxide or um, um, zinc oxide, those sometimes have, they used to be more pasty, but the companies like L'Oreal and others have done a fantastic job of formulating them. And um, Krista has talked about formulations a little bit, but formulations is, are critical in the in compliance with anything. So with cosmetics, it's pe cosmetic companies don't really use the word compliance because they but they use they want people to to like it and buy more. But when we're treating people, there are some formulations that are cosmetically elegant and some that are hideous. So patients aren't going to use the hideous ones. They're going to use the ones that are cosmetically elegant. So you want a sunscreen that you like. If you're going to put it on your face, you need it to feel like a cosmetic. If you're going to put it on your legs or your back, it, you can use some of the spray. You know, it really doesn't matter. So what, what you use is more, what you pick is more what you want to use. The, um, the thing about the SPF is it's, it's a relative factor. So it, what it means is that you can stay out in the sun that amount of time longer than if you didn't have the sunscreen on without burning. So if you, if you use an SPF 15 and you're really, really fair and you burn easily, if you normally would burn in 15 minutes with an, if you would normally burn in one minute with an SPF 15 on, you wouldn't burn until 15 minutes. So it, you have to reapply these. So people who, so and if you would normally burn in one minute, an SPF 90 would be worth it to you. Okay. <laughs> then it depends on how you look at it. So if you think, well, I don't need 50 times more protection, 15 times more protection is good enough for me, and I don't mind reapplying the sunscreen every hour, then you don't need the, the higher protection. But it, it, it's a... <laughs>
Right. If it says it's waterproof, but m many of those aren't going to put a waterproof claim on them because it, it's too hard for it to work. Because it needs to penetrate through that stratum corneum, the dead cells on the skin, so that because otherwise it, it'll just wipe off immediately. So it just needs to penetrate a little bit, just like a moisturizer it plumps up the, that top layer of, of dead cells that are laying there, and, and that's, it's going to stay there a little bit longer that way. Yeah, just hang on, let, let Krista add to it, hang on. Uh, just a comment on that from a formulation and a product standpoint. Um, the biggest thing that I think, and also something that the FDA has recently recognized, is that the biggest issue with the performance of sunscreen is following the indications of the product, because they are over-the-counter drug products, and it's the manufacturer's obligation to to inform you of the indications of how the product should be used. And the FDA has recently changed uh, a lot of their labeling requirements for you know some of the products, all, pro all sunscreen products, and it has affected us, that they, we have to provide to you in indications of how often you should, how you should be reapplying them, what the performance of the product is to withstand you know, some of the things you mentioned, sweat, water, uh, you know, uh, getting in water and things like that, and how easily it can wipe off. So uh, one of the biggest things is, is just following, I think, the indications of it. And L'Oreal does formulate with both types of sunscreens. Uh, there's a big move, I think, mostly away from the barrier sunscreens, like the titanium dioxide and the zinc oxide. Um, they can, when we use the chemical sunscreens, we can use a combination in the formulation to make sure that, that the performance of the product is as broad spectrum as possible in terms of um, deterring both of the types of UVA and UVB rays uh, that she mentioned. Do what? I guess it depends on how aggressively you uh, <laughs> how aggressively you apply your makeup. Um, you know, if you don't feel that it's wiping it off of your skin, then you know that's that's kind of probably a more specific basis, you know, question. Uh, but you know, if you have any concerns about that, you know, choosing a product that either you're putting on your makeup that includes a sunscreen, or you know, maybe something that's water or sweat resistant, probably. Yes, Dave. <laughs> 